good evening members welcome you all for this uh, today's uh, study circle meeting on uh, internal audit emerging trends and opportunities to handle this session we have our own fraternity member and good friend uh, none other than c anup thomas i welcome you all this for this program I welcome you uh, mr anup also very interesting because generally small and medium firms much uh, want to uh, practice much on internal audit there are lot of opportunity as per uh, section 138 of company act some of the listed unlisted and private companies need to uh, have a compulsory internal audit fulfilling uh, criteria of turnover paid up capital and uh, deposits and loan considering all those if you having a good bandwidth there is a plenty of opportunity as uh, mr we are discussing anup said some of the investor they will uh, give a criteria you should need to have a compulsory internal audit then only we can have a invest interested to invest and uh, having a in internal audit we can detect and have a control on accounts and auditing and we can rectify the wherever mistake happens instead of uh, doing at uh, after post mortem in, in uh, statutory audit we can do it in internal audit and it will give a alert to the managing committee members what is the action plans to be need what is the complaints need they have lack in complaints what they have to do so many things it helps there is a plenty of opportunity for internal audit to explain all this we have with us anup thomas once again i welcome anup thomas and all of you and some of the important programs i want to bring it to all of your notice that the next 23rd november we have a gst practical issues and resolution in filing gst r 9c because we are all going to start 9 and 9c audit gst it's a very interesting session on 26 november we have a one day seminar on sir survey and seizure under the income tax gst and company sir very senior members taking this session i request members to join on 27th as usual we are celebrating kannada rajyotsava in the name of karunada habba is on sunday fun field very interesting session on 27th i request all the members to please join first from 1st december bangalore branch first of a kind it's starting online yoga classes for members and students at very very subsidized cost because generally members will be busy our is table work generally we will not able to go out and uh, do exercise or something please we can have a fit mentally and even for students also very good we will be maybe going for client place out of station wherever we can uh, do yoga by following online classes i request members to join for yoga classes also second and third in chancery pavilion hotel we have a real estate program and so many other programs lined up i request members to join all these programs and make it successful once again welcome you all for this program i request our secretary promote to give a introduction of our today's speaker mr anup thomas over to you thank you chairman <laughs> i would like to take the privilege in introducing mr c anup thomas who is an associate director with grant thornton bharat he is a chartered accountant with 13 plus years of experience and partners with organization to enhance their enterprise value mr anup collaborates with the organization to manage the risk and enhance the control environment through the process transformation simplification and optimization Mr. Anup has vast experience in managing projects using the agile principles to provide risk advisory services, including internal audits, enterprise risk management, business process transformations, and setup of control governance frameworks. Prior to rejoining Grant Thornton, Anup has worked in with a large professional service firms. He has experience in industry and was part of a team in Global Captive Center managing the rebate audit operation. Mr. Anup has had large complex and global audits by collaborating with various functions such as business operation risk management compliance legal anti money laundering to plan and execute his audits his expertise of risk advisory services covers industries such as pharma life sciences staffing 
education, real estate, IT, IES, manufacturing, and he collaborates with startup to set up their control governance framework. Yes. This brief introduction, I welcome you, Mr. Anu, once again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chairman and uh, Secretary, for the uh, context setting and uh, also sharing uh, your thoughts on internal audit uh, and also for the introduction. Uh, at the outset, I welcome each and every uh, member who has joined this um, session, I'm sure. Uh, 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 and I am grateful that uh, you were able to take the time out uh, from your busy schedule and um, join this uh, session. Uh, I thank you for that. Um, I'm sure uh, we, we will together uh, use this two hours that is available with us uh, and uh, learn from each other and make it um, fruitful. Uh, so not taking uh, much time, I will um, quickly um, share my screen and uh, we can um, start with the, um, the session. Uh, and uh, at any point in time, if you have any questions, any clarifications, don't hesitate to ask questions or put in the uh, chat box so that we can uh, discuss uh, at the end uh, or whenever we get an opportunity. Um, so to start off, uh, today's topic is uh, internal audit, emerging trends and opportunities. Uh, we will touch upon uh, certain aspects uh, of what we are currently seeing in the industry and then also explore how we can prepare ourselves to get, uh, grab these opportunities um, as we go along uh, following the emerging trends. Um, so before we get into this, uh, I thought we'll do a quick uh, poll. Uh, for this, we need to use technology. Yeah, uh, I hope everybody has their phones with you. If you have it, please grab those uh, phones quickly. Uh, I will dip, display a QR code. You just need to scan that QR code, which will take you to a poll. And uh, if you do, if you're if you're not able to scan the QR code, just put in the address in your in the web browser, which is slido s l i d o dot com. Type in that and put this particular code, 1859772. And once you do this, it will take you to a quick poll, which will help us to get some sense of who is present in this particular study um, circle meet, and also some context on what is your expectation, how we can meet those expectations, and what you think are some of the key takeaways that you may expect from this training. So I'll quickly go to the, uh, go to the uh, Slido. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Uh, maybe in the chat, you can say yes. You can uh, see the Slido screen. Uh, if that is the case, just type in yes or a reaction which will say a thumbs up. When you're ready, just let me know. I'll give one minute just to get everybody into Slido. There will be two options. One would be a Q&A tab and the other one would be a polls. Just stay at the poll tab, you will see some of the questions. Now I'll just give one more minute before we get started. And it's very simple questions. You can answer it uh, as and when uh, the, the, the poll comes up. Yeah, we'll start with the poll. It's a simple question. I hope you can see the question. And uh, if you are in, just respond with the with answers. Welcome Vikram, welcome Dolphy, welcome SCR, welcome Ranjit Krishnan. Anil, Sunil, Anand, Pankaj, welcome. Sachin, Lokesh. Okay, I have uh, 12 participants, 15 participants, uh, 15 members who have written Prithvi, welcome. Hari, welcome. Devraj, welcome. Good, good to see all of you. Welcome. I have 16 members in this poll. If you're, uh, if you're still finding your way to get to Slido, it is simple, scan the QR code, which is there which will take you to the poll. Baskar, welcome. Roshan, welcome. 
Saju, welcome. Great, great, great. This this first question was simple, just to uh, just to get your attention on how this poll would uh, would start. So I have twenty five participants out of hundred and seven, which is just about twenty five percent. I'll just give one more minute uh, for everybody to be in this poll. Welcome, Prashant. If you're still finding your way, it is simple. Take your phone, go to your camera, scan the QR code. You should be able to reach this particular page where it will ask you to give in the details. Yeah, great. Welcome, Sharath, Venkatesh, welcome. Okay, so I have 31 uh, members in, so I'll go to the next question. Simple, what are your expectations from this session? As soon as you got this particular uh, uh, flyer or a notification, or uh, as soon as you heard that, okay, there is going to be an internal audit uh, emerging trends session, what were your expectations? I have one answer which says, okay, we, you, you would like to know about emerging opportunities. Okay, we will discuss on what are the emerging opportunities. Okay, anybody else? That's one expectation, good tax, tech savvy techniques. Okay, we will discuss that. Understanding the recent trends. Yes, we will cover that. Uh, new technologies. Yes, we will touch upon that. Opportunities and approach. Sure, we will touch upon that for sure. Mm, knowledge. Yes, for sure, we will be sharing the knowledge. We'll cover uh, a lot of knowledge. Updates about risk. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So we'll touch upon what are risks because that is very key for uh, for uh, think. Wow, the CPE credits. Yes, one of the objectives of attending some of the study circle meetings is to have the CPE credits. Hope you all have given your member uh, membership number. Otherwise, that CPE credits might not get to you. Um, risk involved. Uh, there is one answer. Sini was. I don't think so. I'll be able to cover that as an expectation, but welcome, Srinivas. Audit tools. Yes, we will touch upon that. Good, good, good. So these are some of the expectations that uh, you have. We will cover a lot of this. Um, these uh, IFC with internal audit. Okay. Efficiency of IA in small, okay, a small firm, small um, clients. Okay. We'll go through that. We'll go through that. Any, any other? Expectations of management. Yeah, we will touch upon what are the expectations of management from internal audit. Yes, yes, we will we will cover that. Good, good. Latest methods. Okay, latest methods we will do. Audit trail. Okay, um, we'll see how we can cover that. I'll give another 30 seconds to see if there is anything new that comes up. Value additions through internal audit. Okay, that's a, that's a good perspective because uh, because uh, traditionally internal audits within uh, a company have, are considered as cost centers. Uh, let's see how uh, internal audit function can be transformed to add value through that we can touch upon. Anything new that has come? Scope for small firms. What is the scope for small firms? Good, good, good. We'll cover that. Okay, that's good. That's good. I think we have a fair sense of what is the expectation from the audit. Um, moving to the next one. What do you think? What do you think? Members, what do you think are some of the emerging trends in internal audit? What are some of the emerging trends that you see in internal audit? AI support, okay? AI support. We'll touch upon what is a standard operating procedures, okay? Is that that is an emerging trend? Again, AI, use of technology, wonderful, wonderful. Use of software for better understanding, okay? Better understanding of the risk landscape, the control environment, continuous uh, auditing, yeah, use of software for those, yes. AI, AI, okay, we will talk about AI a little bit. What else? What else are the emerging trends that we see in internal audit?
when when we touch upon technology there are a lot of technologies that are evolving which are which can be used in internal audit um for which we need to build capabilities and build our selves to use those technologies we will touch upon how do we do that good good um another 30 seconds to see if there is anything new that comes up okay um we'll move to the next one <clears throat> according to you each one of you is reskilling and upskilling important as professionals okay okay all of you 10 12 12 participants 14 participants everybody agrees that it's important for us to reskill and upskill yeah so if that's the case chairmans are mentioned a lot of lot of programs that are coming up and i urge each one of you to enroll yourself based on the expertise and interest that you have to upskill and reskill because if you if we do not do this as professionals very soon we will be outdated the young, the younger generation the next gen, next generation will take over a lot of opportunities that that will be there for us so it's it's important for us to reskill upskill wonderful wonderful so given this context that we need to upskill and reskill let's get the back to the presentation we'll go through some of the points that we had uh, looked at as expectation so today <clears throat> today what will we discuss what will we discuss today first is we will look at what is the global context what is the risk and mitigation efforts that are there when it comes to internal audit risk and the overall global context second we will see what are some of the global emerging trends and we will also touch upon how internal audit is adopting to these emerging trends and what are the changes that we are seeing what are the transformations that we are seeing in internal audit yeah the first one we will talk about the entire globe entire world what is the current mood current risk perspective that exists we'll touch upon that so if if we were to ask what is your outlook for the world over the next 3 years what would be some of some of the responses you can put your responses in the chat if the question is what is your outlook for the world over the next 3 years what would your initial response be any any thoughts you can put your responses in the chat recession recession yes recession somebody has mentioned recession okay what else what else what do you think would be the outlook for the world over the next 3 years opportunity for india to excel wonderful wonderful new opportunities for india yes world war okay good thought world war india's foreign policy always speaks about peace and all efforts to maintain and restore peace so world war is something that that would be a difficult proposition in case we get into it india as a pillar of global economic revival okay great so let's let's see what what the whole world and some of the risk professionals see okay what do they see so most of the risk professionals and some of the key professionals see that there will be volatility that will exist in this world 41% say that there will be volatility with multiple surprises 
we don't know what would that be there will be relatively winners and losers that is about 37% both of it put together about 70% still feel that we are in a very negative situation with respect to the world only only 10% about 11% are feeling that okay we are we are heading towards a global recovery and that is at a accelerated pace so given that we are in a in a in a juncture in history where the outlook is volatile with multiple sur- surprises we as professional need to prepare ourselves for volatility we need to prepare ourselves to be surprised and also be prepared to respond to these surprises in a very very professional and an efficient manner the second is what is your perception of the world how do you feel about the wor- outlook for the world right now if if i ask are you happy with the way the world is progressing what would your response be are you concerned anxiety okay anxiety somebody is saying that yes there there is a lot of anxiety about what's happening in the world may be fueled because of the geopolitical tensions that are there even uh, even like yesterday there was there was a uh, there was a uh, i think uh, a russian missile landing in uh, poland which is a nato uh, nato country and there is there is tension no comments okay we don't know how to comment on the outlook of the world today we are in a confused stage okay what else great okay um, so if if what what is the professionals and what is the responses to the question from a global community if you see 61% are concerned concerned about what is happening in the world primarily because of the pandemic because of the um, economic uh, situation in various countries because of the geopolitical tension that exists uh, in certain parts of the world a lot of them a lot of them whomever uh, uh, the world economic forum had surveyed expressed concern a lot of them are worried yeah and only only about 3% of the respondents said that we are optimistic about the world again the outlook is very very negative and concerning so what are some of the emerging risks given the volatile background given the uh, the perception of being concerned being uh, worried what is the emerging risks that we are seeing internal audit is all about identifying risk putting in controls along with the management to ensure that we mitigate the risk and helping or enabling our organizations to achieve and maximize its value so given that as an objective of our profession what are some of the emerging risks that we see there was a question that was asked identify the most severe risks on a global scale over the next 10 years as professionals what do we think are some of the emerging risks if you could just redundancy wonderful redundancy is one of the risks that we see okay redundancy trust deficiency i i, I don't know was it uh, for the previous one yes i completely agree concentration of power and trust deficiency redundancy yes yes any other any other points on technology taking over most of the rule based jobs primarily automation and uh, automation and standardization which will el- eliminate a lot of lot of rule based jobs supply chain disruption artificial intelligence okay is artificial intelligence a risk supply, supply chain uh, disruption operational risk okay we we'll look at what are what are some of these right so it was asked and what came out was climate action failure that means there were a lot of companies and uh, countries which committed to climate action primarily committed to reduction of global emissions 
global footprints, carbon footprints, that failure of that is rated as first. Extreme weather, biodiversity loss, social cohesion, livelihood crisis, infectious diseases, diseases, natural resource crisis, geoeconomic confrontations. When we look at our own company, our own uh, um, firms, do we do we even look at these risks when we do internal audit? Because for us, these risks does not matter. But at a global scale, yes, it does. And some more, some of the other ways, these risks have an impact on the company. That's where I draw your attention to, to be aware of these risks and see how it impacts your company and the clients that you work with. Yeah. So these are some of the emerging risks. Now, what is the um, current risk mitigation efforts? What do you think? Are we doing good when it comes to risk mitigation? Are we, are we truly doing enough to mitigate the risks that we feel that exist in the world, that exist in our company? Are we doing enough? Simple yes or no answer. Do you think are we doing uh, enough? Yes. Ranjit says, no, we are not doing enough. Venkatesh says, no. Anand says, no, no. Okay, that's about five no's, five, six no's. Pramod is saying no. Okay, so let's see what, what the world leaders think and what some of the risk professionals think. International risk mitigation effort. What is the current state of internal international risk mitigation? Climate change. Effective is only 2%. 2% of the people feel that the climate mitigation or the controls for mitigating climate risk failure is only 2% is effective. 68% feel that we are in still in early development. There lies the opportunity. Biodiversity preservation, 67% is still in early development. Poverty, 49% feel that we are still in early development. Some of the countries and some of the leaders feel that we are established in or are on track to elevate uh, in poverty eradication. Human health crisis, again, there is opportunity. Only 4% is where the mitigation efforts are effective. Basic resource security, again, 3% is effective. 49% is still in early development. So these are, these are areas where there there lies opportunities. When I say opportunities, we will we need to work with clients. We need to work with work in organizations which focus on these these risk mitigation activities and risk mitigation measures. Yeah, that's the that's the global perspective. And why why is it important for us to understand the global perspective before we get into how our profession will pan out? in the next few years, in the next few decades, because we are very well integrated and interlinked to some of these events, some of these risks, some of these mitigation measures. Because if there is an impact on the economy through a recession, then there is a threat for our profession. There is a threat, threat for how companies will react to this re recession and how we will be able to capitalize on that risk, convert it into an opportunity, and excel as professionals. That's the reason it's important that we have a global perspective of how the risk and the mitigation measures are spanning out at a global level. Now, moving on to some of the um, emerging trends within the internal audit. Before we get into internal audit, we look at what is the emerging trends that we see across across companies, across countries, across the businesses, we will touch upon that. Before that before I jump into it, any any thoughts on what are some of the emerging trends? What what are some of the global emerging trends? You can you can put in your response in the in the chat. Increased role of technology, yes. 
yes we will touch upon that that is heavy automation remote data processing these are all emerging emerging trends global emerging trends yes increased role of technology i don't think so i can uh, cover it in in two hours but let's see cyber security risk somebody touched upon cyber security risk very very key and very very emerging and and uh, somewhere i read that today war is not not fought in the battlefield but in the cyber space countries have specialists who who are engaged in taking control of security systems and apparatus of other countries use of cloud systems and risks involved with that good so let's see what 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 are some of the global emerging trends first one there is a lot of momentum in life sciences technology after the onset of pandemic the life sciences technology space has seen a multifold focus and increase primarily because of its impact on all the other sectors that operate in this in this world if there is a impact on the health all the other sectors whether it is whether it is technology whether it is um, manufacturing supply chain logistics everything gets impacted so we see a lot of momentum in life sciences technologies expansion in networking and interconnectivity today uh, I, i don't think so there would be any individual who is in a tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 even up to tier 4 city who is not connected to either a digital device or to the larger world through a mode of network we we continue to see expansion in networking and interconnectivity and high performance computing is becoming mainstream today the expectation is that our systems are our uh, systems our servers our entire network and our uh, communication becomes high performing so that we can carry out the the activities carry out the transactions carry out uh, the business in a very fast paced manner continued growth in artificial intelligence a lot of people said ai we'll touch upon what is artificial intelligence there we we continue to see growth in artificial intelligence big data analytics there is a lot of focus on big data and cloud computing we touched upon cloud computing dominance of internet security and privacy somebody had mentioned privacy by design there is a trust deficit deficiency that's because there is a lot of compromise on privacy and we see that there is significant important significant investments that are happening in maintaining the privacy and the security of the data the transactions the company and the overall information that is relatable to a individual or a person we see a rise in meta world including augmented and virtual reality we see we see a lot of applications a lot of uh, adoptions that are happening with regards to meta world today there are there are platforms there are communities there are companies which are working extensively on meta world primarily to give an experience which is which is virtual which is also real so we see this happening and a lot of companies are using these technologies because of which there is a lot of inherent risk that comes with it increased urgency to move towards renewable energy the the ukraine war the russia ukraine war has pushed the need for moving towards the re- renewable energy Je- we have seen how the russian economy is getting impacted just by the dependency they have on the russian oil and there is a lot of conversation happening on oil the uh, uh, europe's dependency on oil and because of that there is a push and there is an increased focus and the speed to move towards renewable energy is increased robotics blockchain are becoming more prevalent i'm sure a lot of us would have now become familiar with what is robotics what is rpa what is bots and this this is going to become more prevalent and this is going to become part of the day to day operations and that's going to be the 
new normal. <clears throat> Given these as global trends, there are a lot of risks that these trends bring into the businesses, bring into the company, bring into the operations, and along with it, also the opportunities. As professionals, we need to be focused on these emerging trends with, a, with an outlook and with a perspective of how these technologies have an impact on the businesses, what new risks that they bring into the organization, and how do we scale ourselves up by upskilling and reskilling and prepare ourselves to address these risks and become a partner in our organization's growth and not seen as internal auditors, as fault finders, just finding faults and you know, working with management just to carry out transaction audits. We need to scale ourselves, change our mindset and become partners with the organizations to see how we can add value as the organization transforms. Now, what are some of the evolving business trends? What we touched upon previously was some of the global trends. Now, what is business trends that we are seeing? Yes, pandemic. Pandemic has seriously accelerated the pace of change across the organizations where companies were hesitating to invest in technology, hesitating to invest in infrastructure, hesitating to invest in business continuity planning, disaster recovery, crisis management. The pandemic has pushed it to the limit. And today, these risks are taking precedence. These risks, risks are coming into focus. There is conscious effort from the management, from professionals, to see how these risks can be addressed and be prepared for any kind of event, eventualities that might come. So what some of the business trends that we see is increased adoption of technology, increased security and privacy. Are we seeing this? Are we seeing this? Any responses on increased technology? Are we seeing it in our clients where technology is being adopted? There is increased focus on security. In your own organizations, are you seeing this happening? Pramod is saying yes. Yes, with IoT, yeah, Internet of Things. We are more connected with multiple devices and, and to multiple levels. Yes, we see that there is increased adoption of technology. Next one is enhanced collaboration with suppliers, partners for evolved ecosystem. Today, companies are not operating in a siloed fashion. They are collaborating, they are partnering, they are engaging with their suppliers, they are their customers. There is a whole ecosystem that gets built when companies, companies collaborate with suppliers. Today we see um, large, large companies like Apple, um, uh, like Intel, Microsoft was the one of the early adopters of creating an ecosystem, um, ecosystem for themselves. Today, this is becoming more and more prevalent where our businesses are dependent on our suppliers, businesses, our customers, businesses, and our third party service provider businesses. And all of them have to work seamlessly and that ecosystem has to function for the businesses to be successful. Inorganic growth, this is becoming very, very prevalent now. Companies are acquiring a lot of smaller companies. There are a lot of mergers and acquisitions that are happening. And companies are focusing on inorganic growth in addition to the organic growth that they are able to achieve. So there is an increased trend in mergers and acquisitions. There is a lot of focus on environment, social, and governance because there is a lot of pressure on, on the governments, the authorities, the global, uh, global forums to focus on environment because they see that every passing year, there is a risk of a climate change disaster lurking somewhere in the corner in some part of the world. So th there is a focus on environment, social, and governance. And this focus is percolating into organizations either through regulators who are making it mandatory 
uh, for environment, social and governance uh, to become applicable. There are certain reportings that are becoming mandatory for certain companies. So there is a lot of focus on environment, social and governance. Then with the pandemic, hybrid ways of working is taking um, precedence. We see a lot of new ways of working that is emerging. Gig workforce, people who do not want to become uh, permanent employees, they don't want to work with one fixed organization. They want to do a lot of freelancing work that is taking a lot of, lot of importance. Then there is a new set of skills that are becoming important for us as professionals to be successful. And that is coming into focus. And there is a lot of research and studies that are being done. What would be the skills that are required for us to survive the next decade, to survive the next three years? And then we also see the regulatory environment evolving constantly. And during the pandemic, this evolution was so, so, so fast that every 15 days we used to see new requirements, new regulations, new mandates coming out from the government for us to adhere to. And that is going to become the new normal where we will see regulate, re, regulators coming up with very demanding regulations, very evolving re, uh, regulations and with very limited time for companies to prepare and adhere to. And we also see that the geopolitical environment is constantly changing. Given all the tension that exists between countries, between regions, and between nations. So these are some of the business trends that we see, which are impacting us as professionals. And how do we prepare ourselves to respond to these emerging trends determines how successful we will be. And that's where our, the opportunities lies for us to create an impact for the organizations that we work with and to add value. Now, we'll touch upon the next aspect, which is internal audit adopt. How, how is internal audit adapting to these emerging trends? Before I get into this, are there any thoughts on how you, you as an individual, you as a member of the prestigious institute, you as a internal audit professional, how have you adopted to these emerging trends? If you could uh, put in your thoughts in the chat, maybe there will be some clue, clues for other members to pick up and, and focus on it. You as an individual, how are you adopting to these emerging trends? Anybody, you can you can just share what you what you're doing, what your what your organization is doing in the in the chat. I'll I'll read it out and then then we see we can discuss on those. Updating through tech magazines content. That's wonderful. So so reading a lot of tech related articles, magazines, publications. Is, is good to be up to date on what is happening, what, is, what are some of the emerging trends. What else, what else are we doing? Encouraging organizations to adopt technology solutions. Yes, as professionals, we are, we are recommending, we are partnering, we are suggesting uh, our clients, our organizations, internal, external, to adopt to technology solutions which are more efficient, more, which are more effective, uh, some of the examples given is using a software to do payroll processing, looking at cloud computing to increase the operational efficiency of, of the entire business. That's, that's wonderful. I'll give just one more minute uh, just to get a sense of what, what we are doing, in, what we as individual members doing to, to adapt ourselves. Because when members adapt, the profession adapts. And when the profession adapts, we know that we are we are going along with the trend and we are grabbing these opportunities so when i say profession it is each individual members who who constitute the profession that's where i wanted to know what we are doing before i go into what what we could do and what some what we see some organizations are doing okay 
that's that's wonderful let's see what what is what is this now what what are what is the expectation of internal audit a simple question what is a, uh, we are all internal audit professionals we do um, internal auditing for our clients and our companies what is what is the expectation from internal audit any thoughts expectations from internal audit process compliance and assurance wonderful that means i need to give assurance to the management that the processes and the controls that that are that have been put in by the management are operating effectively and also is designed adequately that's one of the expectations of internal audit thank you venkatesh for that response anybody else risk identification mitigation value addition wonderful value addition continuous value addition okay so in three responses i see value addition coming twice value addition coming twice is that becoming a new expectation from the internal auditors that you have done audit you have spent four weeks with my team you have spent four weeks auditing this particular function what is the value addition that you are bringing after spending so much of time is that a question that we are hearing from our clients from from within the organization when we do internal audits anand has mentioned financial risk control that is an expectation from internal audit okay let's see what what is the expectations right traditionally control assurance was one of the expectations that means i need to provide an assurance to the management that the the processes have been designed adequately they are operating effectively so that the business objectives of that particular process may be achieved that was the simple objective of internal audit and how do we used to do it we used to review the design of systems manual controls we used to do we used to carry out um, test of operating effectiveness and we used to have continuous follow up and engagement with process owners have we stopped doing this no this continues to be the bread and butter of internal audit but what is happening is this today the expectation is changed today there is a lot of focus and emphasis on value addition today management is expecting us to give them recommendations give them suggestions give them best practices give them industry knowledge that will add value and what we typically see organizations are requesting is add value through process digitization let help us understand what are the ways that we can better utilize our existing systems is there a way that i can do a particular process in a in an efficient manner enhanced configuration help me to understand what are the new configurations that are available within my existing systems and how can i enable digital workflows if i am doing a, a, a approval over email can i automate it through a workflow system in a existing application which will make it more digital which will make it more um, efficient enhanced configuration an example is how do i make my vendor more vendor masters more uh um, more data driven how do i ensure that all my information related to a vendor is available with me to ensure that i am compliant with various regulatory requirements simple configurations like making some of the vendor master fields mandatory like pan gst number making it mandatory will help companies to ensure that they do not run around for these documents at the time of processing a payment so those those kind of recommendations are being sought after by the management automating how can i automate manual and repetitive activities integrate certain systems to ensure that there is seamless processing of transactions today there is a need or there is an expectation from internal auditors that we suggest these because we are in a very vantage position by 
carrying out internal audits across functions we are aware of how systems can be integrated how processes can be standardized how um, how some of these activities which are manual can be automated <clears throat> all this can be recommended by us because we work with multiple functions when we carry out the internal audit similarly process standardization what are the emerging good practices that we are seeing in the industry those are being expected as recommendations by the management and one of the key things is <coughs> how do we eliminate non value added activities primarily if there are certain activities which was put in place couple of years back now it does not add value but the team or the function continues to do that particular activity i remember one instance where there was one activity that was being performed by the accounts payable team and this this activity was just generate a report gr ir report from um, from a system put it in a shared folder this was the activity and and the activity continued to be performed and when we asked why are we doing this activity the team which was performing this activity had no clue why they are doing it and every friday they used to generate the grir report they used to create a folder in one of the shared drives and put in the um, date on which that particular report was created and then they just used to save this report and what happens to this report nobody knew and the genesis of this was there was age the grir which was there a uh, couple of years back when the audit was carried out and it was recommended that a weekly grir review may be carried out and the person who was doing this grir review had left the organization about a uh, year back and nobody realized that this report was never touched after that and these are activities that are that gets performed by teams without even knowing why they are doing it and we as internal audit auditors when we when we do a process walk through when we spend time with the teams we need to question some of these activities that are being performed this is just an example of one non value added activity there might be several within an a process and how how do we eliminate this and release the release the system bandwidth release the uh, personal bandwidth and also the storage bandwidth that these activities carry out there might not be a big value that that comes out but if we can quantify that that will that will demonstrate to the management that yes there is a focus on focus beyond fault finding and internal auditors are becoming partners with the organization to help them achieve their objectives cost optimization always in the radar of the management and how can we as internal auditors support this is always question and here it is not cost saving right it is cost optimizing when i say cost optimization are we getting the right value for the investments that that the company is making is what needs to be looked at bringing in process efficiency effectiveness will help in optimizing the cost so this is the change that we are seeing from people from management from companies when they say okay to give us internal audit or do internal audit of a function just don't come and tell me that everything is fine or don't come and tell me that i have seen 15 issues but also come and tell me what can i improve what can i enhance what can i transform what can i change to make my processes better that's where we as professionals have an opportunity to partner with management and see how we can add value when doing so we need to also be very cautious of the independence we should not lose our independence as professionals and also exercise the professional skepticism when we carry out our professional duties we have a lot of opportunities we need to invest in ourselves to gain these skills and work towards adding value that's where they see us as true value added, added professionals and work with us and we get an opportunity to grow within the organization and also partner with the organization 
how do we adapt what how how is internal audit adapting to the evolving needs we'll touch upon that there are three i've i've covered it in three stages planning is the first one what are the changes that we are seeing in the planning phase of an internal audit anybody anybody what what changes do you see from a traditional plan to the current plan how internal audit audits are being planned any any anything that you see in your organization in your clients how this this particular activity has changed as as there been any change in the planning the way internal audits are getting planned yes or no yes or no simple emphasis in assessment of technology landscape wonderful yes we see a change we see a change in the way the internal audits are being planned and let me let me just take you through some of the points what we see in planning agile and flexible audit universe what is an audit universe primarily all the auditable areas within an organization is put together and that forms the audit universe and today this is becoming very agile when i say agile the entire audit universe can change within a matter of few months because of the evolving risk landscape in which the companies are operating today we see extended scope it's not restricted only to financial internal audit is not just a financial audit now it it spans across operations it spans across treasury it spans across various other activities that are being carried out by the organization i touched upon environment we there is a lot of need for internal audits to care internal auditors to carry out environmental audits there is an expectation on how are we performing on our corporate social responsibility there is a expectation on internal auditors to also look at very technical aspects of a company's operations example is if there is a manufacturing company into manufacturing of um solar panels how are their production activities being performed so that is very technical but the expectation is that we as auditors we as internal auditors perform, carry out some kind of an audit bring a subject matter expert review these processes and recommend to management so the the scope is getting extended beyond finance next there is a lot of weightage given to emerging trends and changes that that are happening within the industry in which the company is operating within the region that the company is operating within the country that the con- company is operating and today <clears throat> most of the companies are multinational they work across geographies so there is a weightage given to emerging trends covering all of these there is a lot of emphasis on management audits primarily management comes up and says that no i just need a quick review of supply chain to be done a quick review of a stockist quick review of a third party service provider i need to get the audit done because i see there is some risks <clears throat> so there is an increased demand in management audits these are all based on the risks that management identify based on the reviews that they carry out or they see that these processes are not designed adequately in those instances management audits are being highlighted and internal auditors are being called upon to carry out these audits then we see that skills of the future is taking a lot of importance and these skills are beyond finance and there's a lot of emphasis on soft skills how do how do i manage conflicts how do i solve a business problem how do i communicate effectively how do i work with people how do i manage teams how do i work remotely how do i carry out 
carry out audits across multiple regions these are some of the skills that are coming up on top of that there is an expectation that as a professional we are aware of all the regulatory changes all the technology changes and we need to be up to speed on all that is happening and that's the expectation and that's where how much time we invest in upskilling reskilling being up to date matters and these skills of the future are forming the core of internal audit departments and today if you see internal audit department it is not just a ca or a cwa who who is there in the department you will see engineers you will see lawyers we will see um <coughs> uh see it professionals becoming part of the internal audit departments and internal audit um, service deliveries primarily because today audits have moved on from being finance driven and becoming more operations more um, tech driven now moving on to the next phase which is execution today execution is becoming more agile couple of years back i remember that if you are assigned to a particular audit you you would remain on that audit from the beginning to the end today it has changed today the teams have become agile the execution has become agile there are organizations where team members work on two three four different audits simultaneously and there are different functions that gets audited simultaneously one team member might be working on different processes at the same time example is i might be doing a stat statutory compliance audit for one um area i might be one department i might be simultaneously doing a, a data privacy audit i will also be doing a supply chain review and <clears throat> and we need to be up to speed on all the all the possible skills that we can acquire by reading by being up to date on what is happening so execution is becoming agile today parallel audits are being carried out continuous audits are being carried out and the expectation is that we we are aware of what is what is the skills that is required and how do we execute these audits infusion of technology robotics blockchain internet of things is coming into internal audit departments we are using these technologies there are use cases that is available where internal audits are performed or carried out using rpa technology using blockchain technology is using internet of things today there is a lot of emphasis on use of technology in internal audit and the first or the initial initial use is to is use of data analytics visualization data visualization to make audits more effective in some of the advanced um advanced countries or in in advanced uh, or internal or where internal audits is are matured we also see use of these technologies to perform continuous auditing to to carry out analysis of data or to coll collate data from various systems for carrying out the uh, carrying out audit we see blockchain being used uh, extensively to carry out um, audits where uh, authenticity of a particular transaction needs to be evaluated internet of things is becoming um, a mainstream primarily to collect data to gather data from multiple devices when when we are doing an audit real time and continuous monitoring auditing is is ga gaining prominence today companies want to get real time insights real time uh, data real time information and monitoring of the uh, transactions on a real time basis they don't want to wait for a audit to be carried out they want certain rules to be set into the system into the application into the erp so that if there is a transaction which is not supposed to be um, uh, supposed to be carried out gets identified and reviewed real time basis rather than waiting for uh, for the transaction to be completed and we doing a post mortem as part of internal audit or stat audit one of the examples is say example um, uh there are certain uh, transactions which which needs to be posted by a certain individual to a certain account 
and the the ERP is configured in such a way that if any other individual uh, or a combination of uh, uh, transaction codes get executed by that particular individual, there is a trigger email that gets uh, uh, generated highlighting that to certain uh, team members within the internal audit team who would go ahead and review this particular transaction. Another example is in case there are any potential uh, duplicate invoices that gets uh, identified by the system, those get flagged for the internal audit department to review before the uh, invoices further process. So these are some of the real-time continuous monitoring or auditing techniques that, that are getting implemented or uh, is, is becoming more mainstream in a lot of organizations. This, this has gained a lot of tra traction after the pandemic or during the pandemic where sampling, moving from a sampling audit to a population audit, because it was very difficult to physically get documents to get, to get uh, trans, uh, access to transactions. So the company's teams have moved on to doing a lot of population driven audit where data is analyzed, where trends are identified, where insights are drawn from the the uh, analysis of the entire population. Rather than picking 25 samples, 40 samples, we are mo moving towards more of population auditing where the entire data set is reviewed and trends, exceptions, uh, uh, exceptions are identified through correlation, through uh, stratification, through, through classification, and then samples are picked up, which is resulting in a higher um, uh, higher rate of exceptions being identified. That is on the execution part. On the closure part, what are we seeing on the closure part? When, I, when I'm closing an audit, what, what are the changes that we are seeing? Today, managements are expecting interactive and intuitive reporting. They don't want a word format report or a PPT format. Management is telling, show me what you have uh, audited. What are some of the trends that you're seeing? What are the insights that you're seeing from the data that is getting analyzed. Show, uh, show me more data, show me uh, granular data. And, and these needs to be interactive so that on a click of a button, I can expand and show the entire set of data. On a click of a button, I can collapse it. I can show data in a very visual manner. Uh, say example, if I operate, I have operations across India, can I show it on a map telling that these are the, um, these are the regions where uh, uh, the operations are concentrated, these are some of the, Key risks are the risks are high, medium, and low in certain uh, regions. Certain regions, it's different. So that's the kind of reporting that management is expecting. In addition to the traditional internal audit report through a PPT or a Word document, <coughs> there is a lot of expectation how internal auditors can become the strategic partners in decision making. How can we share insights to management and to the board? Primarily because we work across multiple functions in an organization. And we have the advantage of lo looking, at, um, looking at an organization from a bird's eye view, primarily because we touch upon multiple functions through the cycle of the internal audit. So they are coming and asking us, you know the entire organization, you know the functions that are being performed across organizations. What, what do you see are the challenges? What do you see are the opportunities? What, are, what do you see are the value additions that you can bring to us? So they are seeking for insights, not just within the organization, but also from outside the organization. They're expecting us to come and share leading practices that are adopted by, our, by the competitors, what the industry is following, what is happening with other companies in the similar space. Those are the insights that they expect internal auditors to share during a closure discussion. The other key change that we are seeing is how can internal auditors collaborate when there is a organization change or when there is a control environment that is getting evolved. This is primarily uh, how can we partner in a organization change. Example is there is a new ERP that is getting implemented. How can internal auditors partner through the entire cycle of an ERP implementation? Example, at the time of 
evaluating a solution how can internal auditors partner when evaluating a solution provider how can internal auditors add value during the course of implementation how can internal auditors identify the risks put in the mitigation controls so that the risks are arrested even before it gets implemented in the erp so there is a lot of expectation which is going beyond the traditional internal audit and we need to be prepared to collaborate with management in these initiatives and that's where we have a lot of opportunity if we are prepared and if we have the skills second is value addition to organization and stakeholders today internal auditors are called upon to demonstrate value addition not just for the internal stakeholders but also for external stakeholders a lot of regulators reach out to internal auditors and 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 see how we, <clears throat> how we can collaborate to add value i'll pause here any thoughts on how your organization or what are the changes that you are seeing in the in your organization if there are any thoughts you can put it in the chat and are we seeing these happening in in the organization in your organization at your client location are we seeing this happening yes okay i'll just give a minute just for us to go through this and internalize this because <clears throat> this is a breakdown of what are some of the changes that are happening within our profession across the internal audit cycle okay we'll move to the next one what are some of the emerging audit areas that we are seeing control by design control by design this is primarily how do i ensure that the process is designed in such a way that the controls are embedded within the within the design of the process itself i touched upon collaboration during organization technology changes transformation internal auditors are called upon to work with teams while implementation of organizational change while implementation of a new technology while carrying out large transformation exercise we are we are asked to work with these teams which are leading the change so that adequate controls are put in at the at the time of design itself <laughs> ecosystem audits we we discussed that how ecosystems are evolved today the expectation or the uh, the request for audit is beyond the organization today we internal auditors are called upon to audit third party risks and it's not just first level sometimes we are also requested to audit second level third level of the ecosystem when i say say i give a contract to a contractor he subcontracts that work and he further procure certain materials from another vendor so the expectation is that we go beyond the initial vendor to whom we have subcontracted the work but also to the subsequent layers so the expectation is increasing when it comes to the ecosystem audit environment social and governance we discussed this emphasis on carrying out audits which touch upon the environmental aspects the social responsibility aspects and also the governance aspects today internal auditors are called upon to recommend what is the best control frameworks or what are some of the leading control frameworks that can be implemented that is what we are seeing integration or alignment audits especially when there are mergers and acquisition there is a emphasis on are we aligned with the company that we are acquiring are the processes aligned are people aligned technology aligned culture is aligned and can we have in, and what is the time frame for integrating our operations with the acquired companies operations 
internal orders are called upon to comment on these and this requires skills which is beyond the traditional finance skills and the audit skills that we possess employee well being diversity inclusion safety reviews <clears throat> this is taking prominence especially the well being reviews because there is a lot of focus on employee well being after the pandemic or during the pandemic there have been lot of discussions on diversity inclusion safety not just physical safety but mental health psychological safety these are all topics that are getting discussed and also requests from management from organizations to carry out internal audits of these areas data privacy security again privacy by design how how are our systems designed so that privacy is maintained across the transaction life cycle if if a uh, personally identifiable information is being processed by the organization so privacy by design is taking an important stage that's where control by design and privacy by design becomes very very critical and we are being called upon to audit this <clears throat> what controls exist today to mask personally identifiable information whether it is pan whether it is date of birth mobile number email id health records uh, or even uh, the employees performance ratings we have been called upon to comment on these technological risk exposure today what are the external risks that a, a function faces what are the external risks a, a process faces what are the external technology risks a organization faces we have been called upon to comment on that internal risks when a technology uh, when a new technology is being adopted does it infuse any new risks into the organization into the process technology change how are we ensuring that there are no risks gets into the process by updates to the technology changes to the technology so whenever there is a change there is a requirement for us to comment on this and this is becoming an emerging area of audit financial controls there is a lot of emphasis on financial controls specifically on precision are the financial controls working effectively are those precise enough to 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 achieve the objectives of the financial control assertions accuracy completeness timeliness validity all of those are getting becoming more and more prominent now transformation how do i use my financial controls to gain efficiencies within the financial process can i transform my financial processes to make it more effective is getting requested as audit areas real time continuous auditing management auditing we touched upon this feedback based or areas today internal auditors are called upon to focus on areas where there is a lot of customer complaint or customers are giving feedback suppliers are sharing feedback telling that this particular process or this particular activity in your organization is broken whistle blower in case there are certain whistle blower complaints which gets investigated and if there is a lacuna in the process internal auditors are being called to look into that particular area area to see what can be further enhanced social media companies are looking at social media posts they are looking at social media uh, reviews comments to identify are there any uh, processes risks that are lurking which needs to be covered so these are some of the emerging areas and there lies a lot of opportunity for us to enhance our skills get to know what is happening in these areas and be prepared so that when there is a request from from within the organization or from our clients we we'll, we are quickly able to scale up and deliver this and add value to our organization now what are some of the skills of the future so mckinsey carried out uh, uh, 
of a survey to identify what would be some of the skills of the future and they categorized it into four key buckets and all of this as humans are very very important and as professionals this becomes even more important and let's look at some of these skills or i will display the four criterias and some of the key skills we will touch upon but all of this are very very critical and key for us cognitive in cognitive if you see critical thinking how do we have the skills for structured problem solving very very important when we do internal audits when we face certain problems uh, in the process that that we are auditing do we have the skills to solve those problems logical reasoning can i reason out what would be the risk what would be the control how do i mitigate that particular control how do i add value seeking relevant information that's a skill as a professional we should have that skill and do we have that and how do we sharpen that skill and how do we how do we be prepared for that planning and ways of working work plan development audit plan development how do how do we become more agile when when we develop a plan how, time management and prioritization skill basic skill but that is becoming that is becoming a priority now because everybody is stretched for time there are multiple priorities that are that are there and we are we are always in a conflict to prioritize one over the other in the limited time that we have agile thinking how do i quickly think how do i stand on my feet and think and respond to management requests that's a skill becoming important similarly communication storytelling today how do i communicate my work communicate the results of my work very effectively to management storytelling is becoming important asking the right question a basic skill for our profession and that's gaining prominence active listening simply listening to the process owner to the management there would be so many issues so many observations but the 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 sense is that we are not doing that and that's that's a skill of the future ability to learn adaptability adapting a different perspective bringing in the new perspective mental flexibility creativity and imagination how can i become more creative creative when i'm carrying out an audit can i come up with creative recommendations can i come up with creative solution can i come up with um, creative uh, ways of presenting my report presenting my findings presenting my results skill a key skill interpersonal we all work with each other other team members how do i have a win win negotiation how am i organizationally aware how am i industrially aware how am i sectorally aware how am i aware about the region in which the company operates how am i aware about the global trends global position of that particular company becomes very important skill developing relationship having empathy building trust becoming very social having the humility skills of the future but these are all basic human skills it's just reappearing as skills of the future fostering inclusiveness resolving conflicts collaboration teamwork effectiveness important skills so the first one is cognitive second one is interpersonal two more are there which was identified self leadership this is where our focus needs to be as individuals as individual members am i aware of my own self how do i manage myself how do i prepare myself how do i reskill myself how do i upskill myself how do i plan to become a better professional that's where these skills come up understanding own emotions integrity motivation self confidence important skills for internal audit auditor professional and just to be a human these skills are very important the last one is where focus needs to be goal achievement ownership and ownership of the goal 
how do i have my, how do i be consistent in working towards my goal self development becomes very very critical first one was cognitive interpersonal third one is self leadership fourth one is digital technology is taking a lot of importance in internal audit and we as a profession are late adopters of in technology generally we see businesses adopting then we see okay businesses are adopted there is an opportunity for internal audit also to adopt and we go ahead and adopt those technologies digital literacy learning becomes critical key skill if you see smart systems having the knowledge of smart systems how knowing data analytics statistics key for development now we know that these are the skills that are required how do we how do we acquire these skills and how do we bridge the skill gap today there is a big gap that exists be between what is the skill that is required to carry out internal audit and what is the skills that the professionals possess and how do we bridge this gap a quick summary what we focus on expands primarily if we focus on a skill that we need to acquire and if we put in the effort we will surely acquire that skill so it's a, just remember this what we focus on expands so if you feel that you lack in one of these skills any one of these skills put yourself a timeline telling that i'll acquire this skill or i will enhance this skill and and start working towards it. maybe in the in next 30 days 60 days and start working towards it that's very important so a quick road map i'm sure all of you as professionals will be aware but i'm just touching upon this becoming aware of the skill gap what is the skills of the future and what is the gap once you are aware of that prioritize the skill that you want to work on primarily you are upskilling reskilling road map have a develop a quick skill development plan so that you are aware that you would acquire these skills which will help you to grab the opportunities that will come your way enroll for courses and programs where you can acquire the skills once you do that <clears throat> participate in projects audits where you test the skills that you have acquired utilize these skills and then see how <clears throat> you can further enhance and once you do that once you have acquired go back and reassess do i know what is the skill gap that i have and how do i further focus on new skills and upskill myself and be ready for the opportunities that are presented now what are some of the emerging opportunities anybody what are some of the emerging opportunities that you see in internal audit anybody you can respond in the chat we have discussed some there are about eight or nine new areas that i have that we discussed covering continuous auditing we covered uh, esg we covered privacy by design control by design feedback related audits these are all emerging opportunities but for individual as individuals what is the opportunity you know we 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 should not be waiting for the right opportunity we should just create it if we feel that a particular area is not being covered in the organization as part of our profession we should go and recommend to the management once we have the right skills telling that we need to do this particular area of audit and create that opportunities and use that skill that you have acquired to work on that particular area and deliver value to the organization some of the reading reference materials that we always need to focus on is yeah reskilling and upskilling never stops again 
going back to the first slide, the environment is evolving and with multiple surprises, there is no way that we can stop upskilling and reskilling ourselves. That's where some of these resources become important. Publications, publications and newsletters from professional bodies. This is a huge source of information on emerging trends. What are the skills that are required? How is the how is an industry progressing? How is an industry changing? What are some of the new things that are happening in the industry? Comes out discussed in the journals and newsletters. Reports published by public uh, professional services firm on emerging trends. There are annual reports that come out from McKinsey, Bain, BCG, and large professional services firm on what are the emerging trends. And for, from a risk perspective, if you are an internal audit professional, global risk report, which is annually published by World Economic Forum sometime in the month of January, February of the year, is a great source to understand what are the global risks and how is it impacting your organization, your region, your country. It becomes very important. In addition to that, trainings, all your study circle meetings becomes a great source of learning. Somebody said in the expectations, I come here for CPE, but we should go beyond that and see how we can use that to upskill and reskill. Webinars organized by professional bodies or service firms. I stop here. Any specific questions? I'm happy to address next 30, uh, next 20 minutes, 25 minutes, we can discuss on any questions that you may have. You can share the questions or you can unmute yourself and ask the questions and we, we can have a discussion around that. Or you can share your own experience on how an internal audit or what are the emerging technologies in the internal audit space? Any questions? Any thoughts you want to share with the larger group? Yeah, 52 questions. Hi, Anup. Hi. There are 52 questions is there. Can I ask one by one? Yes, yes, please. Okay. New analytical tools, if any, emphasis on data quality. Yeah, very, very. By Amalesh. Yeah. Hi, Chaudhary. Yeah, Amalesh, thank you so much for that question. Um, analytical tools keeps changing. I still um, prefer um, Excel in case the data is not huge because that provides a lot of flexibility in carrying out uh, analysis. But there are tons of uh, analytical tools um, uh, that are available. Python is one, R is another one. You have Tableau, you have uh, Power BI. All of these can be used for analysis even uh, simple SQL can be used to carry out uh, the uh, the <coughs> audits, but it all depends on what is the objective of using this particular analytical tool. If we are clear of the objective, then we will be able to narrow down on what is the right tool to be used. Just because the tools are available, we need not have to use all the tools. If your if your objective is clear, why am I carrying out this analysis? What is the objective that I need to achieve? What is the control that I'm testing? If the objective is clear, any tool, we will be able to shortlist on the tool. Yeah. Next question. Fortunate, see, they have asked CAT, C W A T. Uh, I think we can explain that. Yeah, computer assisted audit techniques, right? Primarily, that is what CAD stands for. 
here what it means is primarily i'm using various tools techniques to carry out the audit it can be either a software or it can be um, it, it can be bots which help me to carry out the audit example uh, if there is an entire um, tool uh, that is available with an organization to uh, set up my uh, set up my uh, internal audit in that particular tool i carry out the audit i document uh, i carry out the analysis and i also document the uh, the evidences all of that in the in the tool that becomes computer assisted audit techniques in addition to that if i if i use technology to to carry out internal audit or any audit then it 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 it, it just gets classified as cat General question. That's okay. We can still new, up. new opportunities for recession in advanced economies. Any opportunities for India? Again, opportunities. Any uh, there are there are plethora of opportunities that are available in internal audit. Uh, again, depends on um, the the space that uh, that you are interested in. What is your passion? Example uh, today there is uh, opportunities for specialization in. Uh, uh cyber related in audit specialization in uh environment social and governance related audit uh and there is a lot of emphasis on um use uh, technology audits so if you have certifications uh on any of the technologies there is a lot of focus in that cyber security is gaining a lot of prominence so if you have a cyber security certification again reskilling upskilling you 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 will be able to explore this we discussed about nine or 10 uh, emerging areas you can focus on one based on the interest that you may have technology is taking over the most of the rule based jobs is it any hindrance for opportunities for internal audit or is it still if, if, the 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 good part is we don't want to be doing mundane tasks right we don't want to be doing routine tasks we need to put our brains to use so any rule based repetitive uh, repetitive tasks i would say should be automated should be uh, taken over by technology and we should be using our minds to uh, minds for creative thinking for coming out with better solutions which a technology cannot do so our focus should be on what are the areas that we can work on creatively rather than focusing on what gets automated automation is good standardization is good and that gives us a opportunity to go beyond the regular audit and see what are the new areas that we can do what how can we be more creative and what are the new um, opportunities or focus areas that we can work on so technology especially automating the mundane routine rule based job is a good thing for internal audit i think uh, most of the questions are routine i think uh, what is the most ideal way of Honing our skills as we mature through experience. Okay. Yeah. So, so this this is this is one uh, good question. As we experience what um, what comes in as a mindset is, I know, I know, I know, and we 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 become more like a I know person. I know this. I know this. I know this, and we somehow become uh, we somehow start living in the gen previous generation. that's where it becomes important as i mentioned in the last slide being aware of what is the emerging trends emerging technologies is critical so as you experience you need to spend the time in reading in attending programs and and skilling and reskilling that's that's important as we experience we feel very difficult to take out time to attend seminars to go for workshops and to uh, and to even attend a training session and as, as soon as i uh, as soon as i receive a training in my i will be like okay i know this uh, what is the new thing that will be taught 
but that's where we lose out and it's important that we upskill and reskill to ensure that we keep our skills up to the mark today i don't know uh, when i was a kid up to the degree up to i completed degree i didn't know what was a mobile phone what was a smartphone what is a touch phone today a one year old knows how to swipe one year old knows how to go to youtube and tomorrow when they come into the workforce i don't think so they will be happy with the kind of internal audit that we do they will be like why am i even doing this work the next generation will not be patient they will not have the attention span so it becomes important that we are in track are in in pace with the generation so it's important that as we experience we spend time in reading and attending uh, seminars to keep our skills up to date one more interesting question from uh, venkatesh whether uh, doing a internal audit certification from the committee of auditing assurance board will uh, added a certification will be helpful in internal audit yes <coughs> any any will be recognized in uh, market uh, if you are a specially certified internal auditor or something yes so any certification is is a feather in your cap irrespective of which institute uh, provides that and uh, it is always uh, recommended that there are special specialized institutes for providing specialized services right um, example for internal audit it's the institute of internal auditors that is the premium certificate that um, that organizations look for so if i if you are a certified internal auditor that's like a premium uh, course or a certification that you can take but if you go only based on the certification that it would only be a paper but if your mindset is that i want to learn internal audit i want to become a professional who is sought after in the market then you can learn it with any institute even self learning also is is good you can just learn internal audit by doing internal audit or by partnering with internal audit departments in organization in case you are not a <coughs> internal auditor or you are you are very young, young in your profession <coughs> so mindset is important learn objective yeah ob it is important certification is you have learned through the certification program you have added value to yourself you have gained the skill that's important that's where the mindset is important one more question from ranjit but can sme firms accommodate new tech trends in their audit considering the cost benefit offerings further investing in technology is a chicken and egg story uh if you could just repeat that question can sme firms accommodate new tech trends in their audit audits considering the cost benefit offerings cost benefit analysis yeah so further so, investing in technology okay that's it yeah so <clears throat> chicken and egg story <laughs> i completely agree to that but you we do not need massive investments in technology for us to become effective right <clears throat> today today the expectation is that if you have the skill if you have the skill again the emphasis is on the skill you can still carry out a tech driven audit by simply using excel and the features that is available in excel we don't have to go after fancy 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 tools applications or technologies it all it all depends on how the individual uses the available technology effectively to demonstrate the effectiveness of the audit being performed and how the final re- results are being presented to the stakeholder that's where 
you see a difference there is no need for companies to invest in technology until and unless they have the the bandwidth to do so even top top uh, professional so, uh, service firms have technologies have invested in technologies and they reap the benefit only if their staff who is an individual member uses that technology otherwise the platform is available and it is just available in the organization until and unless the individual spends time to learn that particular technology adapt that particular technology use that technology and deliver value to the organization by using the technology so it again comes down to the individual team member or individual professional on how he utilizes the technology you are done with the questions mr anup yeah <laughs> uh any any other specific points that you want to discuss i'm happy to discuss otherwise uh, over to you uh, sir for your concluding remarks thank you anup it's an excellent session really it was a eye opener for a small practitioners what are the openings new technology tools available for internal audit really it's a eye opener session thank you for our time and effort sharing your valuable knowledge in internal audit i thank on behalf of bangalore branch of ica to you i request our secretary promote to give a formal vote of thanks thank you promote before you go i also want to take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, uh, the bangalore branch uh, for giving me this opportunity and also for all the participants who took the time again uh, for me it is a very uh, privileged uh, uh, privilege i am very privileged because you are spending two hours of your life to to with us it matters a lot for us so we thank you each and every participant each and every member for taking the time and uh, for your patience listening i'm sure uh, even me and all of you would have learned from this particular session and you will commit yourself to reskilling and upskilling at least 30 minutes in a week to focus on the skills of the future so that you become a professional who truly adds value to your organization and i wish each and every participant all the very best and a wonderful career ahead in internal audit thank you i also thank all the members i can see 100% attendance till the last minute i thank all the members for actively participating in this program thank you photo shiva pramod thank you we have come to an end of uh, excellent technical session and of course definitely with the participation of the members as our chairman did mention about the various initiatives which we have been taking and which we will be taking going forward please ensure that we have an adequate participation hope to see you in the upcoming cp study circle meeting and of course thank you anu for making it a convenient and a lively session with using technology at the start of the session itself and especially members uh, definitely a thank you to you for participating in today's event i request everyone to give you a continuous participation good night once again i want to once again i would like to announce that we have a online yoga classes for members and students i request all the members you can uh, register and make a use uh, benefit of this wherever you are even you are uh, out of station or you are at home you can practice online it's a very good uh, session for members and students first of a kind in india i request all the members to join for this program thank you thank you one and all good night thank you have a nice evening thank you thank you